On today's Star Wars Legends lore video, we discuss my perfect capital ship. Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slatter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars Legends lore video. Today's content is once again sponsored by the wonderful YouTube channel X2. What is X2 you might be wondering? Well, it's my second channel where I post mostly gaming content but also some vlogs. Last night we had a Fortnite stream and I played with the YouTubers Bombastic and the Templin Institute. There's a full video of that up right now and I do a lot of Star Wars gameplay, so if you're interested, make sure to subscribe. So on to today's video and this is going to be a bit less structured and more rambly than usual. I just want to talk about the things that I like in a capital ship. Now obviously capital ships can have various different purposes. Today specifically we're looking at battleships. Size is not going to necessarily be important. The idea here is that the ship that I designed should be able to be scaled up or down depending on the needs of the faction using it. So the first thing I want to talk about is the shape and the structure of the ship itself. I think this is one of the most important parts of a good capital ship, but it's not often discussed. When talking about shape, there's two things that I really think are important. The first is a lack of vulnerability, and the second is a maximization of firing arcs. What does minimizing vulnerabilities mean? Well, it's pretty simple. First of all, no executor style trenches and cityscapes across the top of the ship. Fighters can very easily get in there, avoid point defense systems, and do serious damage. You also want to try to place the command bridge somewhere secure, and same with other key systems. There's really no reason why the command bridge actually needs to look out over space. Ships in the Star Wars universe can make full use of hologram technology or virtual windows. Put the bridge deep inside the ship, or if you can't do that, at least somewhere where it doesn't stick out, like on Star Destroyers. We also want to minimize blind spots spots, and that ties into firing arc, so we'll talk about that now. Ships like Mon Cal cruisers do a really good job of minimizing the spaces where their weapons can't hit. On most ships, you have the back end where the engines are, which are usually devoid of both turbo lasers and laser cannons. One way you can protect against this is by sloping the back of the ship down and placing cannons there. Again, this is what we see with Mon Cal cruisers, and remember, the ship doesn't need to have a distinct engine block like a CR-90. The engines can sort of be integrated into the ship itself in an unintrusive way. But what else about shape and firing arcs? Well, if the ship has a large superstructure, you don't want it blocking your cannons. This is something else that's very common on Star Destroyers or other ships. Yeah, some superstructure may be necessary, but I think the ship should be as flat as possible. That way, weapons on the left side of the ship can hit enemies on the right as long as they're not on exactly the same plane, and you don't have guns sitting around doing nothing. I don't like ships like the Providence class that rely on broadsides, and much more like the Star Destroyer model. You've got to realistically think about how the weapon should be placed. Yes, if you have enemies that happen to be on either side of your ship, having a cluster of weapons on one side and the other makes sense, but if you're just fighting one enemy, you want to be able to bring all of your weapons to bear. The Imperial 2 class Star Destroyer, for example, has octuple barbette turbo lasers on each side of the command structure. However, their scope is somewhat limited because they can only rotate so far before they'd be firing on their own ship. You could easily solve that problem in several ways. Move the heavy weapons up to the front of the ship where it wouldn't be blocked by anything, or you could stagger them in some way. But the Star Destroyer is meant primarily for fighting enemies right in front of it, and is kind of weak in other situations. We want to protect against that. Something else we want to protect against is an over-reliance on a single type of weapon. Again, I know I've been talking about Star Destroyers all video, but I think they give us a lot of good examples of what not to do. The Imperial 2 class Star Destroyer, for example, does not have a dedicated point defense system. It relies entirely on turbo lasers. It is true that Star Destroyers are usually flanked by smaller ships, but you should still be able to defend yourself. My ideal capital ship would use at minimum laser cannons, ion cannons, turbo lasers, and missile launchers. All of the tech is readily available in the Star Wars universe, and many ships use all of it, so I might as well if I'm making the best ship ever. More often than not in the Star Wars universe, individual battles are not decided by capital ships slugging it out with turbo lasers, but rather by starfighters. So I think I'd actually lean a bit more heavily on laser cannons than turbo lasers. If you can dominate the skies with your starfighters, then you can win the battle, and that's basically that. If I had a large enough ship, I would definitely want also a minute 
miniature super laser. Not one that's even the size of the Eclipse, but one that's a size down. Fractal Sponge has talked about how the Eclipse and other large ships like the Sovereign would likely be gimped by the pure amount of power that the turbo laser draws. He designed the Asserter as sort of a more functional version of the Eclipse. It has a much lighter turbo laser, but one that can still take down most enemy capital ships. This gives the ship that edge in one-on-one -on -one battles, but doesn't stop it from being mobile and allows it to still have a fully functioning weapons system. Again, the Eclipse is slow, it's built totally around that spinal laser, and its other ship-based systems likely suffer pretty significantly. I don't want my dream ship to be able to blow up a planet or even crack a continent in half. I only need it to be powerful enough to shoot most other ships out of the sky. If we need to siege a planet, there are dedicated weapons that can do that, and really turbo laser barrages usually work just fine. We mentioned fighters earlier though, and let's talk about the carrying capacity of my ship. The New Republic relied fairly heavily on what they called self-sufficient fleet carriers. I really like that idea. It's like a mid-level ship that serves just fine as a carrier but isn't dedicated to the role. If my dream ship is large enough to have the super laser, then it's definitely large enough to take a few dozen squadrons of starfighters into battle. I think it's important that a ship has multiple hangars so starfighters don't get sort of stuck waiting for other ships to launch. I also really like the idea of a large Venator style launch bay. It's not something you see very often on ships and it would only really be used in an emergency because it sort of leaves the ship vulnerable but it would be nice to have just in case you need it. Fighter wise I think I would take with me a mix of bombers and strike craft but that's kind of outside the scope of the video. And then we have the other miscellaneous systems. I would definitely want like a Mon Calamari redundant shielding system. I mean if we're gonna have the best of the best we might as well go with what the Mon Cals use as well as advanced sensor systems. But I mean all that's obvious you'd want the ship to be built with the best materials and the best technology as possible. Speaking of if I could get away with it I would also include some gravity well generators. Again, it's just another little strategic option that you can use if you ever need it. And that's basically it. That's my dream ship. If I were to make some comparisons, I'd say that the Asserter class Super Star Destroyer is fairly close. I talked about how it has that light turbo laser and is sort of like a functional eclipse. The Viscount class Star Defender is also pretty close. And something like an Endurance Fleet Carrier, I think, matches my description fairly well for a smaller ship. But what do you think? How would you design your perfect Star Wars Legends capital ship, and what would you name it? Let me know all of that and more down in the description. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Until next time, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. May the Force be with you.